Hey, 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 everybody. Is it me, Kendall? I've been playing too much new Super Mario Bros. Oh, I died. I thought I'd film for you guys a little sketchbook tour. Welcome to my sketchbook tour. So, this is a follow up on my last video where I said, hey, for drawing every week I had to do a sketchbook entry. And I said, I guess I'll post it later. And I'm gonna post it. Probably. If you're seeing this, I posted it. Here was my tiny little sketchbook. Now half of it was taken up with the stuff that I showed in the last video, project planning and such. This is my sketchbook. Basically, she sent out an email and goes, hey, everyone needs to pick a theme to follow for their sketchbook. You can pick themes like flowers and draw flowers all quarter. And I was thinking, how can I get around this? Cause I don't want to draw one thing. So my theme I chose was chaos. Cause I have chaotic energy. I wrote a little statement here about what chaos means to me. I have little polaroids here too of things I drew just for fun. What I wrote. Ahem. <clears throat> the theme I am drawing for my journal is chaos. I often work with sketchbooks, mostly involving figure drawing. However, I have never used my sketchbooks to follow a specific theme other than my travel journals, which I often center around my current environment. Drawing from life is my main hobby and I feel like chaos is something I can really pursue in Savannah. Usually when people see Savannah, they see a peaceful and serene place. However, this thinly veils the chaotic undertones which inhabit any city. Between the hustle and bustle of SCAD students, the rush walks of tourists, and the general feel of city life. That was not a complete sentence at the end, but that's fine. So this is working from the back forward in my sketchbook. Because once again, the front part had other stuff in it. I am three minutes into filming and I've not shown you a drawing. Before I show you these, we had a different theme each week, which also had to pertain to our theme. And we had to do three or four sketches with it. I usually did more than that though. This was the first drawing I did. I did it at a SCAD Jester Jam, which is where you go and people do different poses. So I basically have a bunch of different poses in the background. And on top of it, I have one big pose. I think the theme of this was emphasis. Here, are, these are more from the Jester Jam, more from the Jester Jam more people from the Jester Jam, and then this was just someone sitting at the coffee shop. My next theme was repetition. So this, I think, I drew this before, it was actually a time, so I said this was repetition of the pen strokes or something, which is dumb. This was just someone sitting in front of me in class. And this is a baby doll head that my teacher just had. So I drew it a bunch of times. You know, repeating things. This is a scene from a graveyard in Savannah, and I said that the way the Spanish moss falls and the patterning was very repetition y, repeating. You know, you know, you know, you know. Here I have a drawing of one of the graveyards. Which I use, uh oh, what does that mean? All right, you guys didn't see anything, but basically my camera, the SD card just completely malfunctioned. I had to reformat it, I'm fine. So I've recorded this part like four times. <laughs> this is my jaw just popped. This is another page of my sketchbook. This one was also done in the graveyard. I did repetition through the images of the graves, the way I did the sky in the background. And as you can see, I kind of put the paper up against gravestones and I used colored pencil to get the writing from underneath, which is always a fun way to spruce up things and add a little poetry. So our next challenge was to do things in ink and 
This was, I visited Charleston with Mia, Charleston, North Carolina, and this was actually a church there. I believe I have a, as I showed you the Polaroids earlier in the front of the book, I took pictures of this church, in case you were wondering, but this is a church that was in South Carolina, and I did it in ink, sitting on the sidewalk which was something because all of our images, we are supposed to do them purely from observation. This here is a cemetery in Charleston, which was gorgeous. And this is basically the view that I saw. Here's a picture that I took of it, but it's from a completely different angle. It looks very different. Once again, I have more cemetery pictures. I just realized that it's kind of weird that most of my sketchbook is drawn of cemeteries just want to say that's not weird cemeteries are pretty and don't come for me in the comments this one of being this one being of a, another grave tomb mausoleum thing and this one being of the angel statue details which were on that grave the next week's challenge was panor analysis and i had way too much fun with this one so here you can tell I did sort of a uh, animal cracker jar from Target, which I'd eaten all the animal crackers out of. But it's actually on top of an analysis of my dorm room. I don't know if you can see it or not, but just because this was kind of our dorm mascot and I thought that would be fun. And you can see some threads peeking through from the next page because this was a piece where I did panel analysis on this girl sitting across from me at the coffee shop and I actually used embroidery thread to map out the panel analysis on her hair and then I used a red pen to give her these cheek marks. This was my friend's desk which I thought really emphasized my theme of chaos and I also used thread here for example right there and with the lamp I used thread but anyways that was his desk <laughs> continuing with the planner analysis that weekend was the SCAD to fine art festival which if you don't know SCAD invites a bunch of artists it's this huge thing and it's super fun anyways I grabbed the festival brochure and I cut it and I put some light gouache over it and then I used planner analysis to draw my scissors in different positions and I wrote chop chop and snip snip real big, adding some cool dynamic lines just to kind of make a cool quirky drawing. The next week's challenge was to create monotone art. This is Mia, my friend. I did it in red watercolor pencil and kind of blended it out with some water. And then this was someone else at a shop who I did in blues and purples. That one I did not blend out though. That weekend we also went to the beach, so I did a lot of my monotone drawings at Tybee Island, which is only a 20 minute drive from Scott. But it was freezing that week. But these were two people who were sitting near me on the beach. We had to do some of these in pastel because we were starting our pastel unit. So these were two people sitting near me on the beach. This was kind of I was drawing the seagulls near me. These are people walking past. I wrote Tybee Island to give this almost postcard kind of feel, which that was very fun. And <laughs> no one asked to see this, but here is a pastel monotone drawing of my toes in the sand. I'm sorry if you don't like feet. These are my feet. If you do like feet, you're welcome, maybe? The following week, we went to the Animal Sanctuary, which is also pretty close to SCAD and a super fun place to go and draw. This was our class field trip. So I started by drawing these owls. They are Eastern Screech Owls. I drew them in their habitat and then I did a solo portrait of one on a piece of the map that they gave us of the place. Here I have some American alligators. And I did some of them in watercolor in a very children's book illustration sort of style, as well as some planner analysis of them in pencil. This was a landscape I did off of a view from a dock along the nature trail in this conservatory. I found this just a beautiful scene to look at and I really wanted to paint it. I only have my watercolors 
I tried the best I could. It doesn't really do justice, but this is what I have as a memory of that. Here I painted, I drew using planner analysis and then I added some color to some of the farm animals that they had at this conservatory. This is sheep and I wrote their noises near them. So the sheep says ba, the cow says moo, the pig says oink. And I was thinking, what noise does a rabbit make? And my friend looks at me and goes, they scream. So I wrote, ah! Which I thought was a cute little bunny noise. I keep flipping it the wrong way. We were also supposed to draw some to show value. So these are just little drawings of my cats. I had her step on it to show her paw print, but didn't really work that well. This page is not my favorite. These were just people hanging around my class. At this point, we were done the sketchbook assignment. I was just kind of doodling in this text, in this sketchbook, which I am still doing. For example, these were done when I was at home. This is a bottle. This is a really derpy picture of my cat because now that I'm home, I just kind of want to doodle. This is my llama friend. She's right over here. Say hi, everybody. This is llama friend. This was a self portrait. I was doing it in the mirror and I never draw myself. So it was really awkward. This was just a doodle page. This is don't stop me now, which I did because my TikTok art bled through because I was doing TikTok art in my sketchbook. <sighs> and weird words. And then, you know, there's just like four pages left that I'll probably fill doodling during online courses. I have a bunch of finished sketchbooks downstairs if you guys ever interested in more sketchbook tours. I think it'd be cool if you commented maybe your favorite page. I don't post a lot of my sketchbook stuff on Instagram. I used to, but now I basically just post my huge finished art on Instagram. So if you're ever interested in seeing more of my sketchbook stuff, let me know. I'm listening. I'll see you guys. Thank you all for watching my video. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below. Thank you all, have a great day. Yeah.